Lian, thank you for, to be here. My I was I was making a very short introduction to blockchain, like blockchain in five minutes. Okay, good. Okay, in blockchain French. for dummies. Yeah, blockchain for uh, just just in in five minutes, uh, breakfast uh, blockchain. So <laughs> I was I was saying that uh, m most of us when we think about blockchain, we think about uh, cryptocurrencies. Cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and something that, that helps uh, to sell uh, drugs on the internet, basically. And uh, I was saying that it's so much than that. It's in, and it's something that can help uh, the industries to, uh, to go further in, in, in terms of trust, in terms of uh, bringing value in the supply chain. And we, it's so cool to have you here because you are one of the, uh, the, the key actor and the key thought leader on what is blockchain for the future. So thank you to be here. My pleasure. And, uh, and uh, the audience is yours. Okay, great. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for having me. Does this one on? Yeah, they're working. But it's working? Yep. So my name's Leanne Kemp. I'm the founder and CEO of Everledger. I do not speak any French, so I'm sorry for this. But I have a 25-year background in emerging technologies. And in the mid-90s, I worked in RFID, radio frequency identification, and applied that technology to supply chain track and trace. Um, but always at the heart of where I sat, I'm a technologist. So I've often sat behind a keyboard and I feel very comfortable there. I've taken on major engineering roles as a CTO, but I've also become a serial entrepreneur, which I learnt was actually French for nobody would give me a real job. Um, in 2002, I co-founded a company in the online advertising space of Permission Email and subsequently sold that company in Australia to a publicly listed entity for $15 million. Um, so I have at the very heart an understanding of permission marketing and understand pay-per-click and at the end of my presentation, Beyond Diamonds, I can talk about where and how this fabric will become one of the fundamental um, rails of any digital rights management platforms. And then in the last 10 years, because I got bored with myself and after selling a company, no one would let me stay at home and just play golf every day, I reinvested that money in a jewellery business in Australia. Um, and that company focused on the nexus point of insurance and jewellery in the replacement goods space. And that brought me into London and Everledger was born in April of 2015. So I guess when you think about the presentation we'll make today, it's as much about the life journey of Everledger to where we are now, but it's also understanding at the very core of the blockchain what it's the most potent part of that technology and how can we apply it to solve certain problems in industry. And if we listen to the rhythm and the winds of economic change, we know that this technology is well more than just a payment processing engine. My colleague uh, Calogero is joining us. Bonjour tout le monde, donc je suis Calogero, je travaille avec Liane pour Averledger. He speaks et, French. <laughs> et en fait mon parcours avant Averledger était plutôt dans l'assurance et les biens de luxe, donc j'ai passé beaucoup de temps à Paris. Et donc du coup j'ai rejoint Averledger assez vite pour l'utilisation, comme disait Philippe, industrielle de, de la blockchain. Donc pas du tout lié à la finance. Et aujourd'hui on va vous donner un exemple de ce qu'est la blockchain et comment on l'utilise. So let's start. You know, the internet as we know it today is a foundational success. There are more than four billion devices connected to the web and there's not a company in the world or a person on the planet that doesn't use the internet as its fabric. It fundamentally is the economic instrument of our time. And we understand what's happening. When the internet was born, we've seen the evolution of that, of that fabric starting to grow. Web 2.0 came out of the serving of content and of course the behemoth of Google was born on the tail end of that. And as we start to understand the evolution of this technology, we're moving from what was once known as the World Wide Web to the World Wide Ledger. And why is that so? The reason is we understood what it meant when the fundamental economic instrument of our time was dissipated by trust. So the global financial crisis happened. There wasn't a planet 
on Earth. I mean, so there wasn't a country on the planet um, that wasn't affected. I'm already thinking about going to Mars. Um, that wasn't affected by the dissipation of trust. But of course, that economic instrument, the web, has done a great job at serving content. But there is no woven fabric of transactional trust as a layer. So Satoshi Nakamoto released his white paper. And as a part of that process, he began thinking about what would this mean if we transacted funds across a peer-to-peer -peer network. And that was really the preface of where this started. But it was a payments technology, touted to be sure that there wasn't an escrow or person sitting in the middle, and that the trust was born with inside of the computational mathematics that the blockchain was able to afford. But because I hadn't come from a backing, banking background, I'd come from a background of uh, technology and track and trace, I was able to look at this technology and decouple the performance of it from a money perspective to a transactional trust layer and was able to understand how we could attach an object such as a diamond and embed that with inside of a Bitcoin. So, just pour vous donner une idée, une définition de ce qu'est la blockchain, d'une manière très simple, comme pour suivre ce que Léane disait. En fait, la blockchain est tout simplement ce qu'on appelle en français un grand cahier comptable, donc en fait un registre qu'on partage parmi différentes entités, où en fait les informations sont partagées en temps réel, et en fait il n'y a pas besoin d'un tiers de confiance pour la vérification, parce qu'en fait les données sont vérifiées par les participants de ce réseau. Si vous prenez un exemple aujourd'hui, vous êtes tous assis à une table, en fait, pour modifier quoi que ce soit dans la composition de la table qui est devant vous, en fait, il faudrait que 51% des gens assis à cette table soient d'accord pour faire euh, tout le changement. Ce qui, est, ce qui est un changement énorme par rapport au système traditionnel de gestion des données, parce qu'en fait, ça permet une gestion de données entre entités différentes. Donc aujourd'hui, les databases qu'on gère sont des databases centralisées, où en fait vous avez un tiers de confiance qui gère l'intégrité des données, alors que la blockchain en fait permet de partager des données entre des entités différentes sans avoir ce tiers de confiance, où en fait euh, toutes les, les entités se font confiance entre elles et avoir, ayant un mécanisme euh, donc digital et cryptographique qui permet en fait de garantir l'intégrité des données. Donc comme Lien le disait, ça a été inventé pour les transactions monétaires, donc pour éviter en fait qu'il y ait des centres de gestion des transactions, mais euh, chez Verledger, l'approche qu'on a prise, ce n'était pas vraiment de, de l'approche financière, mais plutôt l'objet de, de, de prendre l'accent des objets, et donc on a utilisé la blockchain pour créer un registre d'objets. Et comme Liane va l'expliquer tout, tout de suite, on a commencé avec les diamants, et on va vous expliquer ce qu'on a fait. So we started Everledger in April of 2015 in the heart of London, here. We decided it was important to be able to bring the technology to the forefront of some of the biggest problems in the world. And that was transparency around ethical supply chains, counterfeit goods, and we picked the diamond industry. So we created Everledger. It's a digital global ledger that tracks and protects items of value. And of course, we started with diamonds. Why? It's a 130-year-old industry, and at the very core of that industry, the major participants, family members and large corporates, are still largely transacting in the industry today. And at the heart of the industry, it relies upon a promise. A promise to pay, a gentleman's handshake, and a chit of paper to not only establish the identity of the diamonds, but the transaction of the purchase of the diamonds. So as we started to understand, and we distilled the technology to its most potent form, we thought we could do something quite spectacular. So this is what we did. We created relationships with the major certificate houses around the world. Oh, let me, can you go backwards? There's like a video that plays, it shows you. <gasps> no. Hang on, I think the dude up there can do it. Ah. I'll go back. That's forward. Go back. Okay, ready? This is clearly a live demonstration. Go. Click again. Oh, yeah. Okay, good. There's a mouse. So, what we did. We created relationships with the 10 major certificate houses around the globe. 
for the industry. America, India, Israel, Antwerp, where they grade and certify the diamonds. Now, not only did we capture the four Cs of the diamond, we took 40 metadata points of that diamond, as well as the inscription that is lasered on the side of the stone. Now, we took all of that information and we wrote it into the blockchain. Now, that caused a thumbprint and identify the way that we now can track diamonds online. So then we can track them online in marketplaces such as Amazon and eBay, and we work with insurance companies on fraudulent claims and with banks so they can help to finance the diamond pipeline more efficiently. In the first three months, we onboarded 250,000 diamonds and we built a digital vault that not only enables you to track the diamonds through the supply chain, but you're also able to add other valuable items such as watches, art and wine. Now, all in this time, at the very forefront, we needed to be sure what were the problems in industry that we were solving. And at the very core of blockchain, it gave us this tooling. Firstly, the records are immutable. In other words, they cannot be changed when they enter into the blockchain. They're secure. They use cryptographic signatures to ensure that those records have come from the correct source and are written into the chain. And of course, it's fast, it's scalable, and on a global level, we have 81 countries around the world transacting and trading in diamonds on a daily basis. Now, at the center of this vehicle is the diamond industry, a very bonded chain of trust that's existed for those 130 years. There's a delay in the satellite. <laughs> okay. What are the problems we have in industry? We have a large issue with fraud. Why? At the center of our authority in the diamond industry, certificates are used. They're in a paper-based format and have been so since the 1930s. We've seen instances of those paper certifications being document tampered. And it was only just recently, in 2015, that one of the major authorities was hacked. Two people were arrested and 20 companies were banned from diamond trade as a part of that transactional process. We have seen this also in the process of rough diamonds, where, where countries have had their master certification of a Kimberley certificate document tampered because there is no central authority and there is no distributed ledger to help support this process. Now, synthetic stones in the diamond uh, pipeline in the GE in the 1950s created synthetic diamonds for the purposes of blade saws and drill bits, so industrial use, not for luxury goods. And in fact, it probably makes up about 80% of all diamonds that are transacted across the chain. Now, synthetic stones in the last 10 years have become gem quality standards. And there's nothing wrong with synthetic diamonds. In fact, one could turn around and say that it a, has a better economic and a better... Um, uh, uh, what do they call it? Ethical, Ethical impact. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio would be very excited about this. In fact, he's invested in one of the synthetic manufacturing companies. But the issue with synthetic stones is that they're undisclosed. And what we found in the last five years is that natural stones have been swapped out with synthetic diamonds through the middle part of the pipeline. And they're starting now to become a threat into the consumer markets. It was only about five years ago that this, uh, this issue became such a heightened problem that the industry then came together because, and started to work on machine detection capabilities. There was no de machine detection capabilities in 2014, and there's only been two machines now added in the world that has enabled that detection to happen today. This has only been a machine that's come into the market in the last two years. So synthetics is a very big problem. Conflict stones, of course. In the year 2000, the United Nations came together and formed the Kimberley Pro Steps, which is a three-step validation system with 81 countries around the world ensuring that the diamonds that are transported across the globe are not from a conflict zone. And largely, it's been successful. 99.98% of all countries in the world adhere to the Kimberley process. But at the very core of the Kimberley process is still paper-based certification, and each of those officers are armed with no more than a fax machine and an embossing stamp. And then we've seen, from a banking perspective, double financing, where certain parts of the world are legitimately taking invoices and double financing them through multiple banks. And this has created a crisis in our industry. For the first time, the industry is at the mercy of financial services. 
Only in the last eight months, we've seen one of the larger banks, Standard Chartered, remove themselves from industry, leaving a $2 billion shortfall on top of an already $5 billion shortfall for supply chain finance in the diamond industry. There are two brave Western banks left, ABN AMRO and Barclays. That is it. Donc, en fait, ce que je voulais vous montrer aujourd'hui, c'est que vous avez entendu parler beaucoup de la blockchain pour tout ce qui est espace financier, mais il y a des utilités qui peuvent être utilisées pour tout ce qui est supply chain, pour tout ce qui est euh, traçabilité. Parce qu'on voit de plus en plus, par exemple, avec le, nos, nos clients et les personnes avec qui nous sommes en contact, que tout ce qui est euh, corporate responsibility euh, devient une priorité de plein d'entreprises. Le fait d'avoir de, de la visibilité sur les matériaux euh, que les sociétés utilisent et les données et l'intégrité des données qui sont utilisées euh, pour euh, tout ce qui est euh, problème de réputation de la marque, parce qu'on a déjà vu des marques effectivement euh, avoir des, des problèmes par rapport à certains fournisseurs. Donc l'approche que euh, Everledger a pris est celle de donner une plateforme pour la provenance et pour la transparence des supply chains qui permettent à, à n'importe quelle industrie euh, d'avoir de, de la visibilité vis-à-vis -vis de leurs partenaires, de donner de la visibilité vis-à-vis euh, -vis de leurs clients sur les biens et les produits qu'ils achètent pour en fait donner vraiment euh, une visibilité totale de la, de, de la production jusqu'à l'utilisation. Et ça, on a vu que ça donne des bénéfices soit opérationnels, soit de réputation, mais aussi de relations clients, parce qu'on a vu que de plus en plus, les jeunes générations euh, achètent notamment euh, en, en, en en choisissant les entreprises euh, avec les valeurs qui sont importantes pour eux. Donc c'est très important d'avoir effectivement de, et de donner la traçabilité sur ce produit et de donner effectivement euh, la, la, la possibilité de choisir vis-à-vis -vis des fournisseurs que l'on a. Donc la blockchain c'est quelque chose qui pour nous est fondamental, non simplement dans l'espace financier comme je dis, mais pour toute entreprise et pour toute relation client, parce que comme euh, Philippe le disait tout à l'heure, toutes les entreprises ont une supply chain et à, à la fin du compte, tous les produits euh, physiques euh, ont euh, des problèmes liés à, aux matières premières qui sont utilisées et tous les produits digitaux ont des, euh, des problématiques liées à l'intégrité des données. Donc quand vous pensez par exemple à des sujets comme l'anticontrefaçon, euh, la, la contrefaçon c'est des problèmes qui effectivement euh, sont pour des marques qui euh, produisent des produits physiques mais vous avez de plus en plus des, des problématiques de gestion des droits digitaux par exemple et donc du coup la blockchain est quelque chose qui peut aider dans la traçabilité et physique et digitale So since, the, since we started Everledger in April 2015 we have 1.26 million diamonds in the chain we've identified 7% of fraud on open marketplaces We worked with banks and insurance companies to help with the vision of the risk chain across the industry so that we can begin to understand how we can bring transparency to the object and the supply chain to assist in banks feeling more comfortable in working with the industry. Now, in November last year, we also launched Everledger in wine authentication and we've been working in the art industry. So diamonds, art, wine and luxury goods is very clearly at the heart of Everledger. And beyond this, we know that the technology becomes the rails of transparency around the world. We use blockchain, smart contracts, machine vision, and high definition photographs to identify objects through the supply chain and assist in not only the transparency of the object, but the trade platform as it starts to run through. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Two questions. Yeah, that, that was very, very interesting, and thank you, Kugaleo. It was very, very uh, interesting to uh, learn more about blockchain. It was very inspiring. Um, I'm sure that most of the people here have a better understanding of what is, what is blockchain now. Thank you for that. <laughs> Sur une chaîne de, je sais pas, dans une note de 0 à 10, vous êtes arrivé à 8h30, à quel niveau de connaissance de blockchain Alors, on va dire, par exemple, euh, entre 0 et 2, qui dans la salle Ouais, entre 2 et 5 ouais, D'accord, plus de 5 Ok, 10 pour, pour Nadia hein, qui, qui s'occupe de blockchain chez, chez, à la Caisse des dépôts. Were they voting for him or me Was no. That <laughs> no, sorry. Ah, okay. They're voting on the knowledge they had at 8.30. Ah, I see. <laughs> et euh, qui a plus de 5 maintenant Ah, on a, on a amélioré. 
so that we are improving the knowledge of uh, blockchain in okay. one hour. Okay, good. This, this is, is good. very good. This is very important. Uh, question. Um, information has value as well. Information, and we need to trust information as well. And what about fake news? Do you do something about fake news? What do, what's your view on uh -huh. that? Is blockchain, uh, has blockchain the capacity to, to help um, people to provide information that we can trust? I think so. Um, really? so, so we're certainly looking, my background in um, you know, permission-based email and marketing stretched across the five or six years and I engineered a solution in Australia, UK, New Zealand that satisfied around three and a half million permissioned emails and subsequently sold that business. Now the CPC or the, 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 um, the campaign backbone was mostly driven by just pixel tracking back in, back in, that, back in that time. This fabric is starting to become now enterprise level. It was only yesterday that Spotify made an announcement about its acquisition of a blockchain startup. Mm -hmm. We're starting to see this fabric now becoming implemented in some of the largest track and trace companies in the world with IBM and Walmart and IBM and ourselves. Certainly at the very core of this, fundamentally the components of blockchain have been around for a long time cryptography for the better part of the last 40 odd years and at the central authority of certification google has also implemented forms of blockchain to ensure certificate authorities are kept so we did go through a process of ssl the security socket layer on the internet to provide us with some form of security around our logins mm -hmm. and we're now moving to a point where we need this for certifications or need this for materials themselves, and the largest um, content providers in the world are looking at this fabric, if not haven't already implemented. Mm -hmm. And the last question would be, um, when do you think that we'll have blockchain or tech, blockchain technologies or maybe cryptocurrencies as something that is uh, mainstream? Mainstream in the industry, mainstream in the, in, in for everyone. Yeah. So any transformative technology becomes digitally ubiquitous. It becomes like the air we breathe and it's not something that you're conscious in terms of understanding that you're using it. When will it become this? At the point where it has interoperability. Um, not dissimilar to the evolution of email. When AOL was one of the first major providers in the world, I could only provide an intra-email account between AOL to AOL. And then something magical happened with a protocol, which is SMTP. And that then enabled the explosion of email to become interoperable across multiple backbones and providers. We're working on that right now. I'm heartened by the fact that we have some of the largest corporations in the world beginning either acquiring startups in the space, for example, in your environment with Spotify, um, or alternatively, we already have the largest names of IBM, Intel, MasterCard, Visa, the NASDAQ. They are all embraced this technology. So it's no longer if, it is actually when. And the saddened part about this, to a certain extent, is that you will use it without knowing that you're using it. Yeah. So it will not be a conscious moment of this is what I'm using. It's like, you know, we, we use the image of the cloud, you know, like when the cloud emerged, you know, there was a lot of buzz around, but now everyone uses a cloud without necessarily knowing if it's a public cloud, a private cloud, you just use an application and the way you or your consumer interface with it is just the application, not actually the back end. Uh, so, you know, as Leon said, this is something will happen. So elements of blockchain will be adopted by multiple companies and multiple services, but the end consumer will necessarily not be aware. Um, and what will happen is that, you know, you will get the benefits from it and it just will become an option for your architecture. So you're gonna have cer certain pro processes or protocols that we will engineer with the blockchain without necessarily you know, have an impact or writing an etiquette with blockchain on top of it. Mm -hmm. Thank you both of you. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you for you. your Enjoy time. Enjoy your day. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat>
Donc merci pour votre temps, merci pour le temps que vous avez donné à la blockchain et pour avoir pris le temps de vous intéresser euh, à ce sujet. Ça va impacter la totalité de nos industries, ça va probablement impacter euh, votre entreprise, ça impacte déjà aujourd'hui euh, la façon dont on va pouvoir faire du, du business dans, dans, euh, dans votre industrie. Donc je pense que c'est un sujet important. On a plusieurs opportunités ici avec la blockchain. L'une d'entre elles, c'est d'utiliser une sorte de, de machine à remonter le temps. Parce que si vous avez loupé le début de l'Internet euh, et euh, la façon dont ça s'est construit, eh bien ici, on est au, au démarrage, on est à l'aube d'une nouvelle révolution. Donc vous avez la possibilité d'y participer, euh, d'être à l'intérieur de, de cette révolution et de voir en fait comment les choses euh, s'enclenchent. Et la deuxième chose, c'est qu'on est probablement aussi dans une révolution euh, des organisations centralisées vers des organisations très décentralisées et qui vont probablement aussi changer le monde, et les entreprises dans lesquelles vous travaillez vont probablement être différentes dans les, dans les années à venir. Et, et, et blockchain, ça risque d'être la technologie qui permet en fait cette évolution. Donc vous pouvez faire partie aussi de cette nouvelle façon de voir le monde, et donc de mettre de nouvelles lunettes, des lunettes qui, qui voient le monde de façon décentralisée, plutôt de le voir centralisé. Voilà. Et puis pour ma part, ben je vous invite à lire mon livre, donc c'est la page du publicité. Je suis disponible pour faire des conférences donc dans vos comités de direction, comités d'entreprise, euh, mariage. Je fais aussi les animations de centres commerciaux. Donc euh, n'hésitez pas, je peux venir faire des animations dans vos magasins. Pour ceux qui ont des, des magasins, je serais ravi en même temps de vendre, vendre vos produits puisque j'adore vendre. Euh, mais lisez-moi surtout et bonne journée à tous.